Hi, I'm Dr. Melanie Dorrington, one of the GPs with Clinic 66 Online and one of the telehealth clinical directors. We're going to talk today about cervical screening tests and human papillomavirus. So why do we do cervical screening tests? What we're trying to do with these is to actually prevent cervical cancer. It's a really good test and in Australia we're lucky that we're leading the world really in where we're up to. So the cervical screening test is what we used to have the pap smear for. We got rid of that in 2017 and our testing now is actually looking specifically for human papillomavirus, HPV. There are two types specifically that we really don't like in terms of cervical cancer and then there are a bunch of others. So the test we do these days is actually looking for these viruses in um, samples from the vagina or the cervix. And I say the vagina or the cervix because as of 2022, we've been able to have patients do self-collected samples because all we need is a sample from the vagina. Now, before I go any further with that, who do we need to be testing? Basically, if you are aged between 25 and 74, you have a cervix and you have had any type of sexual intimacy, any type of contact. It doesn't need to be penis inside vagina sex. It is inclusive of trans men. It is inclusive of lesbian females. Anyone who has had any sort of intimate contact needs to be having cervical screening done because it's about the human papillomavirus being transferred. So what we can do is offer cervical screening tests to everyone with a cervix from the age of 25 years old up until 74 years old. We still need to do these tests even if you're no longer sexually active and even if you've had the human papillomavirus vaccine. These things don't change when or how frequently we do the tests. Routine tests are done every five years. So these are offered to people who don't have symptoms and who have had a negative test or haven't had a test before. So what are the symptoms? If you have any abnormal vaginal bleeding, so you're getting bleeding between your periods, if you're getting bleeding after having sex, something that's not just your normal period bleeding, that's a symptom. If you've got a new pain or something that's changed, if you've got a change in vaginal discharge, those are things that mean that we are not doing the standard screening test. That's important when it comes to self-collection. With any symptoms, we don't wait for five years to test. If something has changed and you've got a new symptom, we do screening and we wanna have a clinician collected sample. So that's the old fashioned pap smear style. You need the speculum examination you need the samplers going up to the cervix to collect cells from the cervix, which is what the lab will end up potentially needing to look at. So what our labs can look at, first of all, they look for the human papillomavirus. We get a variety of answers from that, either that you've got no human papillomavirus detected, you're gonna have a type 16 or a type 18 or a non-1618 human papillomavirus. And if we are testing you because you are symptomatic or one of these results is positive, we need the lab to then look at those cells to see whether your cells look normal or not. That is when we are more looking towards what stage of change is there and are you progressing towards um, cervical cancer? And I say progressing towards because it's actually a long journey. We know that for cervical cancer, it's at least 10 to 15 years from human papillomavirus infection to developing a cancer. Most people clear their human papillomavirus. It's quite frequent sexually transmitted infection, but the majority of healthy people will clear the virus. So when you get the positive test, we like to see what your cells are doing. And then depending on the results of that, you might need to go and see a gynecologist to have further testing done, or we might just need to check you again in a year's time. When you're up to your five year screening at the moment, you can, be, you can have the option of either doing a self-collected sample or a clinician collected sample. With the self-collected sample, what we can get you to do is we can actually send you a pathology form. You can go to one of the pathology labs and they can give you a swab. 
basically when I talk to people about cervical screening that they're doing themselves a self-collected sample, as long as what I say, as long as you can do a COVID swab and you can put in a tampon, you'll have no problems getting a self-collected human papillomavirus screening. All you need to do is to be opening up the tube with the swab in it, separating the lips of the labia and inserting that swab like you would a tampon. There's a nice mark along the um, length of the swab so that you can hold it at about that mark because that's where how far you need to insert it. When it's inside, we just need you to rotate it around a bit, move it around a bit and keep it inside for 20 to 30 seconds. And then you can pop it back in the tube and give it back to the pathology place. So you can take that swab home, you can do it in the toilet at the pathology place, whatever you are most comfortable with. If that result comes back as showing human papillomavirus, that's when we would need to get you to go and see someone, uh, see a clinician who can actually do the sample collection from the cervix. That's the one thing it's not collecting. We know that these self-collected samples are just as good as picking up human papillomavirus on the clinician collected samples. Because in the same way we know these days about how COVID goes through the, the sinuses and that for the PCR tests that we've all been talking about for years, when you do that nasal swab, the PCR can pick it up. This is a PCR test that we're doing for human papillomavirus. If you are shedding that from the cervix, it will be along the vagina. And when you do that vaginal sample, it will pick up that human papillomavirus in the same way. The one thing it doesn't do is collect samples from your cervix. So you don't have to worry about the fact that you don't know where your cervix is or whether you're collecting enough sample from your cervix. We don't want you to be trying to collect sample from your cervix. It's just from being inside the vagina that we're collecting that sample. But that's why if you get an abnormal result or if you're symptomatic, that's why we need a clinician collected sample so that we're actually having a look at those cervical cells. For the five year follow up of a routine test, we have the capacity to, to have a three month leeway. So if you're at 57 months since your last screening, it's from then that you're able to do your next screening. If you don't know when you had your last test done, there is a way to find out. We have a national cancer screening register and you are able to log on online to find that, but there is also a phone number and you can find out when your last one was and when you're due and that way you won't be getting this done too early um, and you know if you're overdue as well so that is something i highly recommend doing find out when your last one was done and when your next one was, is due if you don't know at the moment there are some people who do need screening more than five years so this is if you've had an abnormal test in the past and you're still on your routine follow-up if you're looking at a test of cure if you've had um, an intervention done because you've had abnormal cells, um, if you've had a um, hysterectomy because of abnormal findings, potentially you might need some earlier follow-up to start off with. And then we actually have some really special groups of people. If you have significant immune suppression, if you're immune deficient, and this includes people like those who are HIV positive and also some people who have primary immunodeficiencies and some people who are on immunosuppressants for conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, then you might need more frequent testing. If you don't know whether this is you, please either talk to your specialist or your GP, um, or if you know what your diagnoses are, you can have that chat with us as well. And we can figure out whether you need to be tested more frequently than the five years. So especially if you're worried about going and seeing your GP or having an intimate examination done, the self-collection is a great option. It is safe. It is reliable. You can even do it in pregnancy. You can do it after menopause. You can do it after it's been a long time since you've had any sexual contact. And you can do it from the comfort of your own home. So don't let there be a barrier to you getting your cervical screening up to date. And hopefully we will reduce even further the rate of cervical cancer in Australia.